and take these different skills that are that you may not well. think is a big deal. It's something people in your community won't know how to do. And so taking what you know and what you're good at and applying that in such a small way can have a lasting impact. And so before you go to your service thing, if you make bracelets, bring a bunch of string with you. You know, show up with these little things, little tools for yourself. Because you can just sit down in the school at recess and you start making bracelets and every kid's gonna surround you. And then every kid's gonna tell their mom that this cool new volunteer autumn, and it's just gonna help you get um, integrated in your community faster. Yeah, what you think is old and kind of like mundane is like new for them. Mm -hmm. So don't ever underestimate something that you know, you think maybe played out in the United States because they don't even know about it yet. And so bring that to the table and introduce them because that's a part of all our culture and they're interested in that. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you guys have any questions? How many of you have applied to Peace Corps already? And who is now going to apply? Like, are you guys, is everyone here planning on applying at some point in the next year or two? Yeah. No, I should have said I'm like, hola, si, sí, gracias, like smiling at everybody, and yeah, now I'm fluent in Spanish. That's so cool. Um, so I never heard of the Pacific Island language, Tongyen, before. Uh, it's specific to that country, uh, which is kind of cool uh, that I got to learn like this brand new language. Language is so important. It helped me integrate my community. What's interesting about Tonga though is that there are more Tongans that live outside of the United or outside of Tonga that then live in Tonga itself. So they live in California and in Utah and New Zealand and Australia more than they live there. So maybe I'll have the opportunity to meet some Tongans. <laughs> uh, so I can practice my skills, but it, it's a fun language to learn. I had the old application process where you just said, I want to serve in the Peace Corps. And they picked uh, where I went. And I was in the PCMI program, so I said to my recruiter, I want to leave as soon as I finish my coursework because I don't want to kind of be hanging around. And my recruiter, I finished in August and I left in September. It was just like, like that. Yeah, mine was the same. Um, they told me where I was going and when I was leaving. And I think there is something to say about the random selection of your country, I would never have picked El Salvador. It would not have been in my top 10. And I had such an amazing experience. And so if you're thinking about, if you're flexible, I think you should really follow through with the old process because it usually works out pretty well. Yeah, I would say so. I didn't know anything about Pacific Islands. I didn't know where Tonga was. I had to look on the map to figure out. And then I had to like really look because it's really small. <laughs> and then once I found out and I, got on the plane and I got there. I was like, this is amazing, it's so beautiful. <laughs> and, but I wouldn't have known to pick that before. So I'm glad, I'm glad that Peace Corps chose me to go there. Yeah. And it's a good fit for me. Like, you, they, through that application process, when they're getting to know you, when they're reading your personal statement and all of that, like they're looking and they know those sites. You know, they should know those sites. And so trust in the process mm -hmm. because you could go to the country that you think that you really like and get there and hate it and not stay. So trust them too. <laughs> and then you can blame Peace Corps if they place you there. <laughs> yeah? Um, do you guys know about the Peace Corps program thing? Yeah. So it just started. It's in the College of Education. So you can take uh, some of the courses within the College of Education as well as courses that align with uh, the certificate program. It doesn't guarantee you that you will get into the Peace Corps, but it makes you more competitive because you've now taken the time and invested in trying to prepare yourself to be an applicant. And they give you uh, instructions on like resume writing, some workshops, working, looking at different uh, government organizations that you may be working with there. It's just preparing you for service. Do you know like how many classes? Does it count like a minor or? It's kind of, so we're still kind of working that out, oh, but okay. it, it, it's, uh, it's a certificate, for, you get a certificate from Peace Corps, and I think they're trying to gear it towards you getting a minor in international, in, uh, in international development, but focusing on education. Okay. Um, do you know, sorry, do you know a lot of judges on the things that doing it? Me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, I can give you 
the information for the actually the head coordinator or if you want to go look behind you there's the Peace Corps recruiter and she ha also has information about it too. Oh, okay. yes. Um, all the downtime that you have, um, it's you don't realize that you're gonna have so much time kind of doing nothing, and you know being alone in this community, especially in the first six months, if you don't have those relationships built yet, that you will you know, by the end of your service, and so filling my time with meaningful activities. And you know, being alone in this place, away from everyone you know, it really forces you to get to know yourself. And so you go through such a personal reflection process that no one ever talks about when you hear about Peace Corps. You don't ever hear about you know what's going to happen to you or how you're going to feel. And so just really taking the time to to listen to yourself and understand how to be alone. Let me got this. <laughs> I think on two parts. One, like the personal, you have I mean, life still exists within the United States. You have family members who may be going through something, or you may pop onto Facebook one day and see all your friends getting married, or going to grad school, or doing that, and you're like, like Gavin said, I'm just kind of sitting here, you know, doing this, and you you reflect, and that's why I said it's so important to know why you're there, what's your purpose, and on yourself. But then on a professional note dealing with your counterparts sometimes, the cultural differences, the tensions, trying to find a balance between, you know, taking on all the responsibility, but also capacity building and teaching them how to do it themselves. Uh, I think for, for me, that was always the, the balance because I knew that I was here to help and they were investing in me, but also giving them the tools that, so that once I leave, they're able to do it and they don't need, they don't need me. <laughs> There's nothing quite like a Peace Corps counterpart. Yeah. yeah. Is it hard to adjust back? I think it's interesting because we're both still in the readjustment phase. I got back in September, and so for me, coming back wasn't the typical culture shock of I, I'm going to the grocery store and there's too many options. Because in El Salvador, in the capital, it's very Americanized. You know, we had restaurants and grocery stores, so for that, it wasn't as overwhelming. Coming back and realizing that you really create a life. In Peace Corps, it's 27 months. It's not just a quick volunteer trip or a mission, and you're leaving behind a life that you develop and people that you love, and that is really hard to let go of. And then coming back, you know, you're so excited on one hand to be with your family and your friends and drive your car and not have to be on the bus and all these little things, but you really, it is hard to leave behind the life that you created. Yeah, and I just got back four months ago, so I'm still like in that transition process. I would say it's been difficult just because I was on a tiny island with a very homogenous group of people and they like knew me and I had these really strong connections with people and our culture in America is just so different. You know, they're they're really invested to figure out who you are as a person and you know, we're just so like in and out, in and out, in and out, and it's just like, whoa, okay, this is, I'm back, I'm back in America, where it's very individualistic. And I think that, for me, that transition to uh, being back here has been a little bit difficult, but having this program, the PCMI, coming back into the College of Education, starting, uh, finishing my program, has been a great safety net because I'm with people who are also interested in what I went through, interested in what I saw, and that's kind of been uh, a great, because they have that cultural sensitivity that maybe other Americans may not have. <laughs> So that's been nice. Yeah, the MI program is is so helpful in really processing your experience, and it takes the pressure off of coming back and having to figure out what your next step is. You're able to really think about what you want to do, and there's education and urban planning, which is like community development, and I would I would really recommend it to anyone. Yeah. Um, one I leave in June for October, and I'm just wondering if you have any points of advice that you, you didn't know when you left what would be really helpful. Congratulations. Thank you. Great. What sector are you going to be working in? In the health sector. Okay, cool. Uh, I would say take to a lot of pictures, be open minded. Like I said, I packed uh, like all the right stuff, right? So I had the right things and I had the right attitude, and then that event happened, and then I had seven days worth of clothes in my computer. And so it's not really what you bring, it's what's inside of you. So those things could 
you know, go away in a second and then to just you without all your stuff. And so I would just say have a great attitude, be willing to explore and experience, take a lot of pictures, people say, but take, we were talking about taking the right pictures <laughs> of, <laughs> not just selfies with your own sisters, <laughs> yeah. Because uh, you're going to want to reflect and look back and take videos, you know, take, videos, take yeah. a lot of videos. And when it comes to packing the right stuff, I read so many Peace Corps blogs and articles on what to pack, and so I bought, bought all of this quick dry and these clothes that I hated, but I was like, I need these for Peace Corps. I, I never wore them. I wore the jeans that I brought, some shorts. So bring, bring things that you like to wear. Um, also bring a one terabyte hard drive. This will be, this is my biggest piece of advice to anyone going to Peace Corps. Between volunteers, there is, at least in El Salvador and um, Frankie who's gonna come and Burkina Faso said the same thing. You share movies, TV shows, everyone's downloading music and everything that's going on in the US. And if you just have this little one terabyte Passport hard drive, you can store everything on it, and it'll really get you through like a night, a rainy night in your in your home, or like when you just need to escape and you want to watch Game of Thrones, you'll have it. So bring that. Definitely that hard drive. It's a lifesaver. Yeah, and then when mine died at the last four months, it was like, oh no. And then books, <laughs> some good books, yeah. or a Kindle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bring things to entertain yourself with, because. Some days you're gonna have a long community event. You're gonna work with your women and they are just gonna piss you off. Like you're gonna need a break from everyone in your community. And you can go home and watch like a couple hours of your favorite show or a movie. You'll feel much better. In English. <laughs> what was the process like uh, preparing to go over to like your country? Uh, for me, I finished my program in August, so during that time, I was kind of just like collecting like things here and there, making sure I took some last minute trips to see different friends or family, giving them my address of where I'd be training. Uh, looking, I didn't really want to like research the country because I wanted to be surprised, you know, and I didn't want to have my own perceptions of what I was going into and then be disappointed or like, you're not talking or dressing how it showed on that, you know, YouTube video. So just kind of. Just living kind of my life and waiting and enjoying the experience that I was in here in the United States and then transitioning to where I, where I was going to go. Yeah, just enjoying your favorite things, like doing things with your friends, taking pictures, eating the food that you like. If you know you're going to go to a country where this isn't available, have it as your meal before you get on the plane. And um, just kind of celebrating this like journey that you're about to take. You should be really excited and not stressed out about it. And I think it's really important not to do too much research before you go because I went to a country that had a lot of gang violence, and if I would have been reading about El Salvador's problems of violence and the murder rates, I would have been freaked out. So just, they'll teach you everything you need to know in training and more. Oh, and do, definitely make sure you get your health and financial, if you're student loans or anything, get that taken care of. It's so much easier to do that here when you have an actual telephone than mm -hmm. trying to figure that out when you're at staging or when you arrive in your country and you see an email and it's like, you have it, someone with your bank account or student loans or something like that. So get, make sure all your financials are taken care of so you can go there with ease. That is the worst email to get when you're in the Peace Corps is paying with your, your finances. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not fun to deal with. Yeah. Um, so like, is violence like a big thing in any of the places where you go? Like did you come across the same violence? Yeah. Um, I got there in 2013 and there was a truce between the government and the gangs that was keeping the murder rates low. Now they figured out people were just hiding the bodies. <laughs> but Peace Corps, El Salvador, and countries where there are threats of violence, I know in some northern African countries, they cluster you. And so instead of um, being spread out all over the country, you're clustered in certain regions that are really safe, that are proven to have the highest levels of safety. They also have special transportation plans. For example, we couldn't take the bus um, through departments, which are like states. So I could take the bus in my little department in San Miguel, but I couldn't cross the department line. And so Peace Corps pays for a shuttle that you just have to reserve and they'll take you to the capital, they'll take you to the regional office. Um, towards the end of my service, the gangs uh, came into my community. I was totally safe because I had been there for 27 months almost and they all knew me. I worked with their moms, their sisters, I was like the fun gringa who was taking kids to camp and we would go to the beach. So I was kind of protected. What I found interesting was the new volunteer that came to replace me on my site, her name was um, Ingrid. Ingrid had a lot of problems. Her counterpart, who was one of my close friends on my side, had to take her and present her to the gang leader in order for her to be safe. Like They didn't want new people in the community. There was um, issues of murders in my community, 
And so El Salvador, with that, they shut the program down in January. And so if you're going to be going to a country where you have a general idea if there's like concerns about safety, security, in Africa, you know, there's health crises that are all over the news. Be prepared that your program might get shut down. People got evacuated out of El Salvador. They had been there for six months, and people will re like relocate you. They'll try to, but it's like a very real part of doing Peace Corps is you never know how stable the country you're going to is going to be. But they, they will protect you. They're security officers. They have amazing infrastructure there. And they'll help you out. Uh, for me, there was no, it was, told me it was called the Friendly Islands, so no <laughs> violence. The police officers don't even carry guns. So, I mean, and the prisons are open closed. So you just have to be back at night. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's really friendly, really slow, very island life. Didn't have to worry about that. Um, I think more so the, what did I have to worry about? Oh, the natural disasters. That's what I had to worry about. <laughs> uh, yeah, people were really, really kind. And if you live with a host family, that's like the biggest source of protection you'll ever have. No matter where you are, like your host family or the, your counterparts, they love you so much, you are their volunteer. They take you on as a family member, like it or not. And they're going to keep you safe. They're going to know, where are you going? What are you doing? Who are you with? What are you eating? Yeah, I didn't have a host family. I lived by myself in school, so I had my own home, which I really liked because uh, you just have like, your little retreat place. But I had a family in the community, so they would, if I wasn't there for dinner with them at night, they would have one of their kids bring it over, and uh, or they would, I would go over there at night to eat. But I did like having that space to kind of retreat to, um, even though they would be like, what is she doing over there? <laughs> uh, but uh, having, finding a family in your community and saying, this is mine, I'm hanging out with you all the time, take me wherever you're going, and you build that connection, because sometimes it can be lonely, mm -hmm. you know? but. As long as you feel like you have another safe space to retreat to is nice. And everyone wants to feed you. You're going to have so many new moms and dads. <laughs> Definitely going to gain some weight. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the freshman 15, but the Peace Corps 15. Yeah. Because you can't say no when you're there and you still have to eat it. You cannot say no during your first couple months. You go on house visits and they're like, here's a giant piece of sweet bread and a, co and a coffee with six sugars. And they're like, oh, thanks. And then you go, here's another piece of bread and some more coffee and sugar. And then you're doing this all day. I looked back at my journals and I was like, I cannot wait to exercise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want any more breath. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Personal development. <clears throat> so Peace Corps is really fun and you learn to laugh about all of these things. And what's really great is the return volunteer community. We served in totally different places. Um, what he has well and Frankie is going to come. Our experiences were so different. But everybody who's done Peace Corps, laughs about the same things. Like when we talk about being sick or the bugs and you, everyone just gets it and so it's like a little family no matter where you serve. We build such strong relationships with return volunteers from all over. Yeah. Close on that. <laughs> so I, I have a few things to follow up on. Um, I, think, I think these ladies summed up Peace Corps in the best way possible. Um, going back to your safety question because I, I need to put on my recruiter hat at this moment. Um, <laughs> Not all countries are like as shaky as El Salvador. Um, there are a lot of countries that, if it's deemed unsafe, Peace Corps will take out the volunteers, like she said. There are a lot of countries, like, people say, why don't we serve in the Middle East or whatever, Northern Africa? It's just deemed unsafe. Um, I was in Kenya, and we had some terrorist um, attacks during my second year, and they consolidated us. And then the people after that, the cohort after me, they, they evacuated them. Do they want to go back in Kenya? Yes. But will they allow volunteers to go back right now? No, because it's deemed unsafe. Um, but there are safety security protocols in place in every country. You have a safety and security uh, like team in every office, and in addition to a medical team and um, just support in, in your uh, particular sector. So I don't want to scare you off by saying like every country is unsafe. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> Not at all. Um, but you, I mean, during your first three months, you will learn how to live in that country and how, like, which places you should go to, which places you should not go to, how late you should be out, um, all of that training. And you made a great point. Like, you build those relationships in your community, and so those people definitely look out for you. If something goes down, I remember one time there was like, my bank in town was like 30 minutes away. That's where like I could go to the post office and the ATM, and something happened there. And of course, I wouldn't hear about it because I mean, one, I didn't speak the local language, and two, I didn't really care to hear about it. But 
everyone's like, did you know that this is going on? Don't go to the bank in town today. So it's definitely that word of mouth communal kind of setting that definitely protects you. So, <laughs> just so you can say that. And two, to go back to your question about um, like how do you decide where you go, that the application process is a lot different than when we applied. And I would love, Leah, if you said just a little bit about how you work through the new application process. But if you go to peacecorps.gov slash opening, you can kind of look at the programs that they have and what they expect. And I'm just going to show you very, very quickly. But um, they'll ask you, like, what do you want to do? And so these are the six sectors that we mentioned. Um, just for the sake of time, education is our largest sector, so I'll show you that one. Um, and then they'll say, where do you want to go? And so you can specify a particular area, or you can say, I want to go anywhere. Um, and it's fun to say I'll be going anywhere just so you can see all the different requirements, I mean, different places in their requirements. Um, so for education right now, we have 21 openings, and some are very specific in their language requirements, so you can highlight that if you want to. Um, if you have no requirements, it's totally fine. Um, if you think that you want to practice your Spanish speaking or French speaking skills, you would either have to have four, four years in high school or two semesters in college. The more you have, the better. But um, Let's just look at going right now. The featured programs are really nice. Um, these are the programs that we may have a hard time filling or people just don't want to go there for whatever reason. So if you think that, oh, I don't know if I'm very competitive, but I want to serve in the Peace Corps, definitely look at the featured programs. So very quickly, um, each program has an apply by date. So the next apply by dates are July 1st. Um, and you'll definitely know if you're in or not by September 1st. And then the department, yeah, it's, it's so transparent. <laughs> it's insane. I, I love it. It's great. But like, we just kind of like sat around and we're like, all right, peace corps, like what's happening? And I'm like, Obsessively checking your email and waiting for calls. Pretty much. Um, and then this depart by the it's, kind of, it's sensitive, but it gives you an idea of around the time you will leave. Um, and just some other things to note on this page, like they'll tell you the language requirements once again. This program is huge, 60 positions, wow. which is probably why it's a feature program because they need a lot of people for it. Um, they do accept couples. If you're thinking about serving with the partner, I would say apply way ahead of time because it takes a long time to place two people because they want to make sure you both have the same skill set. So definitely keep that in mind. But it's pretty straightforward. Um, this isn't like exactly what you will be doing, but it will give you an idea of what to expect in each uh, project. And then it'll tell you, so see, this is very open. It's like, you just need to have a, a bachelor's degree, but some are very, very specific. And it's like, you need a BA or BS in, I don't know, nursing or whatever it may be. And then it'll tell you like specific uh, uh, skills you need or experiences you'll need in the field. And then this is just fun to look at. All of our living conditions were different. It changes all the time, even within the country, but you can kind of get an idea of like how you would live in that country. And then the final thing um, is the medical considerations. So Leo will say something about this in a second, I think. But after you apply, you have to do a health history form. And it's a, it's a very like simple form. It's a computer-generated form. And you just talk about any previous conditions you may have, any medications you take, um, if you've like broken a bone or anything within the last two years. And they kind of tell you where you can serve based on that. And that's kind of how you choose where you can go and what you do. Is there anything you want to add to that, Leah? Use YKEA as a, a great resource. She has been my number one um, supporter and information person. Um, she's just been great. So use the resources that you already have on campus. And it sounds like there's a lot more you're expanding with the Discord <coughs> prep and the club and everything like that. But the more knowledge you can get, I think, you'll come into the process at least knowing somewhat what to expect and then give yourself time too so i started like a year in advance just looking at the website what were they looking for what kind of experience do i need and then i could tailor my resume um to those skills and those openings and then um yeah patience is, is really good too i know i'm sure it was a lot longer for them but it still was um always checking my email waiting for phone calls things like that but try to distract yourself too when you've already sent in that application because you can get so much more experience um, throughout that process, not just waiting for the next step. Can I add, be honest with your medical history, mm -hmm. uh, because there were volunteers that get sent home. I mean, where I was, you're on an island, there's no real hospital there. Uh, I mean, there is, but it's not the best facility, so you either have to get flown out to Fiji or New Zealand or Australia or back to the United States. And you need, it's for your safety. Like, they're not asking you these questions to eliminate you, but you don't want to get sick and be stranded somewhere. 
and not have the right facilities that are going to meet your needs. So be honest. Be honest. And there are countries that can handle, can better accommodate volunteers with different medical issues. You know, countries in Eastern Europe, I'm sure, have, can accommodate volunteers more so than the islands where Autumn served. I know in El Salvador, we have people come in who have serious allergic like problems with allergies and had different medical issues that because of El Salvador's proximity to the U.S., they were able to, to handle. And so, like Autumn said, it's not going to eliminate you if you have something, but do be honest about it. And once again, you have those uh, medical officers in, in your uh, country, so if you get really sick, you can call them up anytime, and they usually try to talk you through it and kind of help you out at your site, but if you need to come in, they'll make sure you can come in. Um, going back to what Leah says, the application process is about six to 12 months. Um, so if you're interested in it, it's something that you would definitely start looking into at the beginning of your senior year at the latest, if you're trying to go right after you graduate. Um, Thank you for saying nice things about me. I did not pay her to say that, but um, I will not be here by the time most of you graduate, but there's always a piece for a career on campus, um, and I can give you my card. The email never changes. Definitely, definitely reach out to someone because your resume is everything. Like This application process is very new. It's almost two years old, and it's easier to apply, and so more people are doing it. So last year, we had like over 20,000 people apply for 4,000 positions. And yes, it's more competitive, but if you know how to go through the process and you make best friends with the recruiter, you can, it's work prep. <laughs> yeah, you, can, you can get points on your application and it will definitely help you out. Peace and I, make sure you have a lot more masters, make you soup, and you kind of get a little bit of a little preference, not really, but yeah. you, cause if you're studying something specific or you know you want to deal with a specific population of people, I mean, you're going to have that in your resume, so you're, that they're going to cater you to that because you have a lot more skills. You have a year of coursework, graduate coursework under your belt. So that's another great added advantage. And with MI, you get non-competitive eligibility for one year following your service for all federal jobs, or for federal jobs that are posted that um, they, people want to hire return Peace Corps volunteers. I just got a job through NCE, and it really is a great benefit in addition to everything else that we talked about. So. Um, yeah, I was going to say in terms of the Peace Corps Master's and International Programs, like what if you don't get in to the Peace Corps, but you're in that program? Uh, you, you will get in. Oh, you yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, so it is guaranteed then. Basically. Pretty much. <laughs> but it's guaranteed as long as you clear your medical and your legal and all that jazz. But in regards to just getting into the Peace Corps, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we have a partnership with them within all the schools, so. Yeah, because I was thinking, you know, like, what if you don't get in? That's what you're doing with your, their nothing. I mean, but honestly, like, all of our programs are still designed to be a master's program in itself. And so for if some reason you change your mind and you don't want to do the Peace Corps, you can still do that master's program and just finish it within those two years. Mm -hmm. Oh, Because you know. I don't mind it situated as an internship. That's what, what the credits were. So if you don't want to do Peace Corps, you do a different type of internship. Yeah. Just a really long one. <laughs> we get six credit hours in urban and regional planning for 27 months of service. And then really your requirements coming home is to do um, a thesis, like you do a, a defense, you write um, a research paper based on your experiences in Peace Corps. And mine was a capstone, so different, uh, but still a paper and a presentation. <coughs> do you apply for the Peace Corps first or will you apply for graduate school, like master's? I'm not sure the process is, or actually with the College of Education, you apply to the Peace Corps, you apply to our program first. And then within like six to 12 months process now, your second semester, then you apply for the Peace Corps. It's kind of like, when do you want to, when do you want to go? Well, I'm only a freshman right now, but I'm looking at like further in the future with like Masters International for like possibly. When you're a senior and see when you're a senior, apply to your program. Yeah. Yeah, and then when you hear about your program, then start your, I would recommend starting your Peace Corps application kind of as soon as, as soon as you know you're in. And they can help you with that. Whichever program you go into, obviously if it's a massive international program, they're familiar with the Peace Corps, and so they can help you get started. There should be a handbook. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I forgot. Do it. <laughs> That's what I'm it's so cool. <laughs> it was the best two years I could give myself, honestly. Yeah. And there's no upper age limit. Let me put that in there too. So <laughs> if you have parents or grandparents who want to serve in the Peace Corps, um, you can serve at any time in your life. Um, they can serve as a couple once they retire. I had two older couples in my uh, co 
cohort, and it was really nice because they definitely bring a different perspective to Peace Corps. They've had a lot of life experiences, so not only was I learning from people in my community, in my local, or in my uh, trainers, but I was also learning from like your older volunteers too. Which was nice. You guys are gonna have an amazing time. All right, that's gonna wrap up our Q and A.